The Barbados economy is still predicted to record marginal growth of just about 1% for 2011. If this holds true, it would effectively mean that Barbados' economy would have registered four consecutive quarters of positive economic output. This would contrast with the previous five or six quarters of economic decline, which peaked in 2009 at near 5% when the global recession was at its worst. What this says to us as a country is that while the recovery is not as robust as we would have liked, certainly during for this year so far, and while we have still some way to go to achieve levels consistent with those prior to the economic crisis, the sky is not falling on us and the earth has not opened up under us. We are making progress and the overall trajectory of our economy is going in the right direction. What about uh, Clico? And you, you had also spoken of also reaching a satisfactory conclusion before the end of this year in that matter. Yes. Well, we, well we, what, what we have had before us are the recommendations of the judicial manager. Uh, as you know, Clico is a major problem which we have to resolve. And they are presented options that range depending on how you, uh, which one you adopt from about $56 million to 152 or 52 to 156 million, the range of between that. Uh, we are looking at the options, but this is being done on a regional level as well because it's not only Barbados, there are other countries in the region. Unfortunately, many of our partners in the region who are also facing financial difficulties have an even greater overhang uh, in relation to uh, matters pertaining to the whole CRECO establishment, in relation to British America, which is even, an even bigger problem for them because that's almost a $300 million problem. And, uh, and since they're not getting the fullest level of cooperation out of, out of Trinidad in relation to liquidating that, uh, they have to look into their own resources. Now, what they've been saying at a regional level is that they would prefer to see a total regional solution, CRECO <coughs> and BECO together. Okay. Um, however, Barbados would have difficulty participating in such an arrangement because it would mean Barbados would have to be accepting responsibility for liabilities which don't fall properly within our region. <coughs> however, what we are doing is working with the judicial managers to see which of those specific options we believe is the most appropriate. And um, we, have, we have exchanged notes and letters. We have met on it, and we expect that the judicial managers are going back to court very shortly to give a specific answer on which option they would prefer to have to have uh, uh, have executed with the support of the government. And um, and uh, once we have concluded our negotiations with them, we will reveal to the public which option we are going with, and then how we propose to have it aligned. Um, however, I can tell you that the door is not closed on option five. Perhaps without a third of option five, but option five is a buyout of people by strategic investors, and there are now two very interesting investors, both regional, major regional insurance companies, who have expressed an interest in uh, who have expressed an interest in looking at the people portfolios and working with government to resolve this matter, and we have given the instructions uh, to the judicial managers to do the normal exchange of information to sit down to see how this matter uh, uh, can, be, can be dealt with if, if there are real possibilities there for this to happen. So there is indeed a very active like wire option by that maybe at the end of the day can limit government's exposure to the very, very, very minimum. You did not ask, but I think it is incumbent on the internet to speak about um, to speak about British American Barbados. Um, that matter was actually resolved, largely resolved in terms of the way forward uh, before the report report was issued. Uh, we met with uh, Mr. Hulikoff, who is the judicial manager for, for British American, and um, the, the, the company is going to be liquidated, I believe the recommendation is, for that to happen. Um, the government of Barbados um, uh, level of exposure is going to be extremely minimal. We will be able to get the manageable, even if it's manageable for us. And therefore, uh, the expectation is that um, that too can be solved 
um, very, very quickly. Um, uh, and and, and uh, uh, I know for the matter of, of certain knowledge that a strategic investor has also put on the table an option to, uh, to buy out, to buy out um, a large part of the portfolio. Um, there have been public outcry with regards to a uh, delegation to Australia, mm -hmm. which is alleged to be around the vicinity of 200,000. Um, as you yourself have said that you, you're, you are suggesting, you know, that the country maintain a certain course, would you therefore say that the country should maintain, um, if it has to travel, within the region only? And if so, would you therefore be making a recommendation to your uh, colleague, uh, Minister George Hudson, to move RedJet forward so that it can meet the uh, the public demands for uh, travel between St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Kitts and the other territories that have given permission and are waiting for Barbados to to reciprocate in the interests of maintaining frugality within travel. I think you really want to ask me more right uh, The overall travel of the government being contained to the region of the linkage with Jack is really um, if government ministers travel along Red Jet, they, s they provide a savings for Barbados. Yeah, well, I guess if you look at it that way. Look, I think uh, I don't read, I, I read in for the office. I don't read them. The, the newspapers I don't get to read them all every day. I do, do read the, uh, the do you see a connection between the two? Mr. Prime uh, Mr. Was so <laughs> but I want to go. Into. But the I do I, I and I did read I did read today. Uh, Peter Simmons, uh, and I think it is required. Look, Barbados is a serious country. And as a serious sovereign country and a member of the international community, it is required from time to time for ministers to come. One wouldn't want, of course, for people to go on the gallivant, as some people would say, all over the world, at exorbitant prices. Uh, travel and aviation business is, of course, extremely exciting now because it can do uh, aviation during the energy park and so forth. And, uh, and therefore, you would expect that you will see some things happening in that particular way. Two years ago, when the Commonwealth Conference was held, for it, it was held in Trinidad and Tobago. I think Prime Minister Thompson is in His travel cost was even less than $10,000. Now, I didn't see anything from the nation in relation to the cost of the Prime Minister's travel to Trinidad. But of course, it is now fair game for an entire front page of a newspaper. Even in, in, in the face of a major announcement by the Minister of Health of a new hospital for the nation to carry that. But that is part of the work, I believe. Ministers of government, I believe, under the approval of the Prime Minister, travel only as required. Only as required. In fact, I saw in the nation, I saw in the Sunday Times today that I was supposed to have traveled seven times this year. I have not traveled that time. I've traveled no more than three or four times. Mm -hmm. But that's for another mm -hmm. occasion. Okay. Uh, when there's travel required because there's business to be done, it will have to be done. In a recessionary condition with tight fiscal uh, situations, we try to cut down the number of travels that you have to do. I worked with a Prime Minister for personal assistance, and I worked again with another Prime Minister as uh, as Minister for Minister. And I can tell you, the amount of invitations that Prime Minister gets to travel to this meeting, that meeting, this summit, that summit, this current Prime Minister is the least traveled of all Prime Ministers that we have had. Uh, he simply does not travel a lot. And the office of Prime Minister is required to travel to almost everything. So we have to contain the things, not to defend anybody's travel. The Prime Minister is quite capable of defending his own travel. 
But what we have to do is to ensure that our overall program for fiscal consolidation and expenditure reduction is done. Whether that means cutting travel, whether it means cutting some other part of the wastage in the public sector and ensuring the efficiencies are brought. In fact, I have specifically, uh, uh, I have specifically instructed that the Permanent Secretary of the of Finance, that an eagle's eye, a hawk's eye, in fact, they had on expenditures across the system. And we have ensured that this has happened. We've asked departments to ensure not only that they that when they contract expenditure that, that is reported to us before it is done, so that we can keep track of all of our expenditure money. We have signaled to them, in fact I had a meeting with all of the permanent secretaries, heads of departments and persons of related grades, up to late last year in relation to what we expect to see from them in relation to expenditures. We've instituted performance budgeting in the government to ensure that when we give you $10 that you say you're going to spend on X program, you have to show that you have spent that, X, that $10. If you haven't spent it, the money has to be brought back to the ministry for reallocation on the environment and other programs. And if you don't know what environment is, it is the ability to move resources from head to head without having to go back to parliament for a supplementary once that specific head's vote has been uh, exhausted. So we, and we have reports which come to me every quarter on the performance, both in terms of what was delivered in relation to the expenditure which was given, how much money is left, and why that money, that money was not spent, and if it was spent, why you did not get a, a value for money on that expenditure. That is the kind of tight ship that I've been running as Minister Finance for the last year, and it is expected to continue. A lot of people don't know this, for example. But we have issued instructions, both the government departments and statutory entities that rely on central government budget, that they are not to incur expenditure without the approval of the Ministry of Finance first. That they are not to hire persons without the approval of the Ministry of Finance, the civil service, and the Prime Minister's office, unless those persons are in jobs that can be considered to be absolutely critical with which you can do, you cannot do without. We have stopped all subbing in, this, in the public service uh, over time. We have reduced the number of replacements when persons go on vacation, on maternity leave, unless it is a position that is absolutely critical. So there is no spendthrift attitude in this government when it comes to expenditure. And as Minister of Finance, I am going to be keeping a, 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 a hard side on this matter and ensuring that the public's interest is protected. Now, in relation to Regent, I am not the Minister of International Transport, and therefore I would prefer not to have to speak at length on this matter. But I will make this point to you, which I think you know already. The government of Barbados owns almost 49% of the assets. We have more than $50 million invested in the act. We therefore have a responsibility, not to react as some amorphous entity over here, but to our, our own investment. And it was not an investment done by this government, it was an investment done by the last government, to keep Liat in this place. We believe that Regex and Liat can exist side by side in a properly structured market sharing exercise within the climate. Barbados is not a banana republic. Barbados is an independent country of 45 million, <laughs> going 45 million. And our intention is to sit down with all serious people to work through the issues which confront us in an orderly and respectful fashion where we can uh, enjoy the benefits of greater investment, greater jobs, greater economic uh, output and activity.